Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown Ticketing helps thousands of schools and organizations across the country seamlessly provide convenient digital ticketing options for their communities, their families, and their fans. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. And if you want to find out more about how Hometown Ticketing can help you and your program, go to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms, the industry leader in registration. But Final Forms is more than that. Final Forms is a team. It's technology. And they provide schools with compliance, communication, and risk management solutions. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. And they have reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come with athletics. Final Forms can also help with team communication and attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and find out how athletic directors, coaches, and schools are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device and without needing any design experience. It's so easy, even I can do it. Go to gipper.com and start creating world-class marketing content. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to elevate the performance using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They've got online tools. They've got smart cameras. They've always had analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, from club and youth teams all the way through high school and college programs, and even the pros use Huddle to help their teams play at the highest level. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student-athletes and the coaches you're trying to get to recruit them. If you want to find out more, about how Huddle can help you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to say thanks to our newest sponsor, Snap Raise. Better fundraising makes better programs. Get away from the fundraising headaches of the past and go to snapraise.com. Okay? Choosing the best fundraiser for you and your group is critical, and the snap raise difference will make a difference for you. It's easy and effective, it's safe and secure, and you can track participation and progress. Go to snapraise.com and check out their testimonials and see the thousands of dollars that they have raised for schools and teams using snapraise.com. Change your fundraising game plan. Go to snapraise.com and start raising money. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment. We use surveys for years at our schools, for parents, for teachers, for coaches, for kids. And the feedback overwhelmingly was positive, which is a great tool to have when you're discussing your program with a coach or even a parent. And when an issue did come up through a survey, it gives you the opportunity to address that with the, the coach, the kid, the parent. It's information that you really can't put a price tag on. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and see how easy it is to get started using uh, surveys to collect comprehensive data. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your student athletes or your parents, you're really missing out. Go to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive. 
Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards not only raise money for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call them at 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. And we want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an entire library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments and go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We're traveling all the way to Hawaii today, our second time ever in the islands, and we're going to be visiting with Rick Toon. Rick is the athletic director at Punahou School in Honolulu, Hawaii. He's also a member of the Board of Directors for Nomad. We're going to talk about that later on, but Rick, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, anytime we can get to Hawaii, you know, we're going to take advantage of that. So uh, appreciate you joining us today. Um, Rick, you're a working AD. You're not like me, retired. So we're going to jump right into it. I know you're busy. Uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that quick bio, where you were born, where you grew up, where you went to college. And then after that, we'll cover your job career. But, you know, where's Rick Toon from? Yeah, so Rick Toon is from Honolulu, Hawaii. Actually, I grew up on the windward side uh, on the island of Oahu, um, spent my time growing up surfing, body surfing, playing beach volleyball, playing basketball, uh, getting into kid like mischief in the country, running around with horses and right, like just all kinds of good, good, fun stuff. Um, so my uh, my high school schooling was at Punahou High School. So I'm an alumni. Uh, graduated in 1993 from Punahou and then went on to the University of Hawaii to play a little bit of college volleyball for them um, and then graduated a little bit early uh, and then spent my final year uh, transferring to Pepperdine University where I played my final season there. Um, after I was done playing there I uh, had the pleasure and the good fortune of being able to coach with a pretty legendary coach Marv Dumphy who's in the Volleyball Hall of Fame um, so coached with him for a season before returning to Hawaii and starting my, my work career. Wow. Um, I always love to hear the stories. This is my stupid, um, you know, uh, mainlander question. You know, my wife loves to watch Hawaii Five O and CSI Hawaii. Okay. Yep. Any semblance of reality as far as the, you know, the local Hawaiian scenes on those shows, or is that just stupid Hollywood stuff? <laughs> No, oh, that's big time similarities. Like they, they shoot on site and uh, they actually, Hawaii Five O actually shot at my house. Is um, that right? Last year. Yeah. So they, they use real scenes and real people. And uh, I mean, it's a little bit, a um, little bit Hollywood magic, but uh, you know, but for the most part, that's, that's how life in Hawaii goes. Right. So you've cool. got a, uh, you've got a TV credit then on uh, Hawaii Five O. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, no TV credit, just my house, not my face. All right. <laughs> now, um, we'll get back to getting serious here on that next segment. But uh, for our listeners, our guest today is Rick Toon. He's the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're going to be back with some more. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank our good friends, Hometown Ticketing, for their support of the podcast. Hometown Ticketing helps thousands of schools and organizations across the country seamlessly provide convenient digital ticketing options for their communities, their families, and their fans. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. And if you want to find out more about how Hometown Ticketing can help you and your program, go to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. 
Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're visiting today with Rick Toon, the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu. Rick, um, most of us uh, follow a path of, you know, we, we teach for a while and we coach. And then at some point, you know, it either we either seek it out or it comes to us uh, that opportunity to get involved on the other side of the desk. So share a little bit about how that experience went for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, you know, I, I've been really, really fortunate to to have a lot of people that I think um, supported me in my journey. Um, and so I'll, I'll go through the kind of the play by play of how I ended up here. But I think what I want to start off with saying is just uh, there you need to keep looking for mentors uh, you need to keep looking for people to help you grow. And maybe like, at least for myself, I didn't really have a predetermined path. Like I didn't wake up and say, Hey, one day I want to be an athletic director. It's just, you know, and, and I think a lot of my journey kind of is like that. Um, what I did was I relied a lot on, uh, you know, people's experience and, and people that really care about you and, and want to develop you and grow you. You're open to what they have to say. So, Anyway, so my journey, um, when I got done coaching at Pepperdine, took me back to Hawaii. Uh, I had always wanted to be in Hawaii, and I actually got my, uh, my degree. I got a master's in education at Pepperdine. So I've always wanted to be a teacher, and I wanted to be a history teacher. So my undergraduate degree was in uh, U.S. history and political science. I got a master's degree in education at Pepperdine. And then my journey took me back to Hawaii to teach at St. Louis School in, in Honolulu. Um, they're, they're probably really well known for having famous alumni like Marcus Mariota. And, you know, they're, they're kind of called, called quarterback university. Um, so I taught there for two years and I started their volleyball program there. Um, they had one, but it was a little bit, um, it, it was kind of in shambles and, you know, built that program back up to, to something that I think people wanted to be a part of and, and people were pretty proud of. Um, and then my alma mater came calling uh, Punahou and, um, you know, actually two schools in Hawaii. So one was Iolani, which is Punahou's big rival, and then Punahou. And uh, Iolani actually offered me uh, a job to be a U.S. history teacher and to run their entire volleyball operations. Punahou uh, actually offered me a head coaching job on one of their junior varsity teams. And they said, you have a one year guaranteed position as a full-time substitute. <laughs> and I said, whoa, okay. Um, but I think this is the kind of one of the thing I want to highlight. Um, the principal at the time, his name was Kevin Conway. Um, he, I could tell that he was invested in my growth. He really wanted to know about me as a human being. Uh, he wanted to develop, to develop me as a person and not just as, you know, a, an employee. And so I actually ended up taking the Punahou offer, uh, stuck around for a year as a full-time sub. And then at the end of that time, he said to me, you know, I don't have a position open in, in our social studies department, um, but do you want to uh, join our psychosocial department, which is our counseling department? And I said, well, I have zero background in counseling. So how's that going to work? He said, well, you're not going to do actual counseling. What you're going to do is you're going to connect with kids and you're going to work on building SEL curriculum. And SEL is a big buzzword, right? And for people who don't know, it stands for social, emotional, and ethical learning. And so that's what we did. Um, so I spent 10 years in that department um, and I would you know, I got lots of training and, and went to lots of conferences and took some continuing education classes on SEL curriculum development, you know, partnered with organizations like Coaching Boys into Men and, and organizations like that. And uh, ended up uh, writing our ninth grade guidance curriculum that we used at Punahou for many years, uh, was running our camp program um, that really had, uh, I think, over 1,500 kids going through our camp program every year uh, and taught a bunch of our classes, including classes like ninth grade guidance, introduction to counseling psychology, um, and peer helping. And so really worked in that department for many, many years. Um, after a certain amount of time, 10 years, I kind of wanted to 
um, you know, branch out and, and take on a little bit more challenge and responsibility. So I applied for a uh, class dean position at Punahou and I got selected um, as a, a class dean. And so I did that for eight years. And so I really got a chance to kind of see the school from a different lens and from a, a, a much broader perspective. Um, I ended up getting another master's degree in private school administration. And um, yeah, and then I, I, I loved my time as a dean. I, I had the class of 2016 and 2020. So COVID hit right in our senior year right in 2020 and it just blew everything apart. Um, and then after that, you know, you know, being a Dean is a, a little bit of a grind. You pick up a class as a freshman class and you, you take them all the way through um, to graduation. So it was a kind of a natural time for me to transition out. And um, this is where another one of my um, mentors, his name's James Kakos, he's our associate principal in charge of um, athletics. He said, well, hey, what, what about uh, the athletic department? you've been coaching for a long time. And, and the tangential to this is I, you know, my academic career, I, I was, a, I had been a coach at Punahou. Um, you know, I, I had the JV team for my first two years and then transitioned to the varsity team as an assistant under Peter Balding, who's a phenomenal coach and a great mentor. Um, and then finally took over the program in uh, 2007. Um, and I'm still the head coach to this day. So I, I run the boys volleyball program at Punahou School, and we've had pretty good track record for, for the last 12, 13 years. Um, and, uh, and so James said, hey, what about athletics? And I said, yeah, I, you know, it sounds interesting. Um, James gave me a lot of autonomy to kind of um, kind of try to merge uh, athletics with social, emo emotional and ethical learning. I, I think all good coaches um, know that, you know, the, the skills that you're teaching your kids in terms of the skills specific to your sport are important, but not nearly as important as, as building good people and, and good human beings. Um, and so I was very deeply invested in that. And so he gave me the latitude to kind of run with some special projects there. Uh, and that kind of took me to where I'm at today. Um, so one of the special projects that I'm and maybe maybe this isn't the time to go on that. I, I don't know. Um, oh no, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, one of the special projects that that I'm passionate about working on is uh, with an organization called PATH. Um, it, it stands for Progress Through Athletics. It's a national organization found, founded by Cassidy and Grant Lichman. Um, Cassidy is a Stanford grad and a former USA volleyball player, um, and she with the mission of that organization is, is they use high profile athletes, coaches, and sports figures, uh, to talk about SEL topics, um, how to be a good teammate, how to be more resilient, how to deal with competitive pressure, um, how to embrace diversity. Right. And so, um, I've really, Punahou has really partnered with them to develop, uh, SEL content, um, that can be pushed out for free to any school and anyone that wants to access it. Um, and it's really good stuff. So most recently, um, Punahou Path uh, have partnered on applying for an EE Ford grant, which is a really high level um, institution that, that supports private schools in, uh, in research and development. So we applied for an EE Ford grant um, with Wildwood School and Francis Parker School and Phillips Exeter School um, to develop um, kind of like a curricular packet for coaches um, using PATH videos. And we're gonna be working on developing more PATH videos and, 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 and really um, standardizing SEL curriculum and, and content um, that can be used by every school to and by every coach to, to kind of send the similar message about how we should be developing our young people. Well, really cool stuff. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about uh, um, that, uh, that platform. Also too, you mentioned Cassidy Lickman. She's a guest on our podcast on season one and Cassie. James Caicos. Okay. Uh, he was originally at Francis Parker, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm not going to tell you this story on air. 
but I've got yeah. a, a very cool James Keiko story. In fact, I'm going to let you tell him, Hey, I spoke to this guy, Jake Monchier says he has a story about you at the uh, London airport. Uh, see what his, re <laughs> see what his reaction is. He was very young at the time. Gosh, this had to be 25 years ago. So anyway, for our listeners, we're visiting today with Rick Toon. He's the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu. Got some really cool things going on. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms for their support. Final Forms is the industry leader in registration, but they're more than just forms. Final Forms is a team. It's technology, and they provide your stakeholders with compliance, communication, and risk management solutions. Final Forms can also help your schools out with mobile accessibility. They have reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with athletics. Final Forms can also help with team communication and attendance, and even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this with secure language translation. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with the Final Forms team. Can I have Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're with Rick Toon, the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu. Rick, in that last segment, you kind of alluded to some of the mentors that you've had in your career. None of us get where we're at on our own. Uh, the expression that I like to use is, I still hear those voices in my head uh, if I'm talking to a parent or a coach or even a kid. So uh, share a little bit about some of the voices you might still hear. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very true statement. We don't get um, anywhere without people guiding us. Um, and so, yeah, I think some of the key mentors for me uh, when I was in high school, it was my high school basketball coach, Chris McLaughlin, who's kind of a, just kind of a coaching guru in the state of Hawaii. Um, and then when I got to uh, Pepperdine, um, one of my closest friends is Marv Dumphy, who I mentioned earlier, uh, gold medal winning um, national champion coach, uh, volleyball hall of fame, but one of the most down to earth, uh, humble, grounded and respected individuals I've ever met in my life. I can't think of a single person that doesn't uh, have an affinity and respect Marv Dumphy. So just the way he carries himself. So I'm always, uh, you know, thinking WWMD, what would Marv do um, in, in tough situations? Um, you know, after that, like I alluded to, it was Kevin Conway, uh, my my first principal at Punahou, um, a, a, a really, really good human being, um, former man of the cloth, um, just just high ethical standards and an ability to really deal with really complex and difficult issues and break it down into really simple ways to think about it. Um, so I really respect him and he's he's. Uh, not only a mentor, he's a brother. Um, so, I, I mean, I I really develop these relationships with people who I trust and uh, and and who are good role models because I, I, over the years, you know, obviously we all make mistakes. And so I, I just wanted to continue to try to be a better human being, right? And you got to surround yourself with people who are good human beings to do that. Um, the The biggest one, though, biggest role model in my life is definitely my father. Um, every time I talk about him, I get choked up a little bit, um, <clears throat> no longer with us, uh, but, uh, probably one of the greatest men I've ever known. Just an amazing human being, um, uh, really, really humble, hardworking, sacrifice everything for his family. Uh, so that's who I try to be. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing, uh, you know, particularly those, um, stories about your dad. Um, you know, it's amazing, you know, those moments that we have, you know, a as a kid, you know, with your parents or with a coach that, that they just instantly come back to your, uh, consciousness 
you know, in different moments in your life and that, you know, what would Marv do or, you know, what would my dad do? Absolutely. Great, great stuff. Thanks again for sharing that. For listeners, our guest today is Rick Toon. He's the athletic director, Punahou High School in Honolulu. We're going to take a break, but uh, we'll be back. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and find out how athletic directors, coaches, and schools are creating world-class marketing content for their school's social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. As I say, it's so easy, even I can do it. We use Gipper to announce our podcast episodes. It's also uh, a Gipper template that's my uh, podcast backdrop. Go to gipper.com and start creating world-class marketing content for your school's athletic department. That's gipper.com. Welcome back, everyone. Again, our guest today is Rick Toon from the island of Hawaii, uh, the athletic director at Punaha High School. Uh, Rick, you and I were talking, and you know, you've been involved, as you shared, you know, in, in the school and athletics for a long time, but you just recently became an athletic director. So what are your plans as far as, you know, your state and the national organization? Yeah, that's a, uh, a great uh, transition in there. Um, yeah, so I wasn't sure that I was, I wanted to be an athletic director. Actually, when it, when I first became an athletic associate, it was kind of a dip your toes in the water and see if you're going to find fulfillment in this. Um, you know, I'm a big believer. I think for all aspiring athletic directors, if you have a chance to kind of try it out, uh, and see if it's for you and see if it's the difference you want to make in the world. Um, I, I think anytime you have a chance to try any high level position like that out or, or dip your toes in the water, it's a good thing. So uh, I was thankful that James allowed me to do that. Um, and I finally said, Hey, I'm all in. All right. And I, I think that's the other thing is like, just with, with whatever I choose to do, I don't do things that are, that I'm not all in with right? You have to be a hundred. And for this job, you have to be a thousand percent in. Um, so yeah, I recently just accepted the position of a full-time athletic director at Puna Hall. Um, and so my first NIAAA conference will be in Nashville, Tennessee this December. Uh, and I'm all in, I registered for four courses there, uh, signed up for as many of the workshops as I possibly could. Um, signed up for all the networking experiences, and uh, I'm going to proudly represent Nomad there in Punahou School, uh, at, you know, at the conference and just meet as many people as I can and, and learn. I think, um, you know, having that growth mindset is is really, really important, no matter what job you have. And so I'm always open to learning and growing and just getting better. Well, I, I can tell you it was a long time ago, but I still vividly remember my first conference. And there's an expression uh, that we all use. It's uh, like trying to drink from the fire hydrant. Okay, It's just information overload, but you will have a great time. You know, the LTI courses are fantastic on their own merit, but sitting at those tables with six or seven other ADs from different parts of the country, it's those little conversations and ideas that can really um, uh, make the, uh, the, the conference and over the top experience. And uh, again, the many workshops that are going to be put on very cool stuff and one or two social events too. Uh, we're going to have to make plans to hook up and uh, uh, have a beverage or two. Okay. That'd be great. And I've also applied to be on the DEIB committee. Um, okay. Excellent. I just did an inter Well, today's um, episode for our listeners recording this on uh, July 15th. And today's episode is with Amanda Snyder from uh, huh. Broken Arrow High School in Oklahoma. Uh, she's on that committee right now. So, uh, yeah. you know, make sure you uh, make sure you have Amanda put in a good word for you. I'll certainly do it. Although, you know, my word is nothing. So uh, <laughs> once again, for our uh, uh, listeners, our guest today is Rick Toon. He's the newly appointed athletic director, but a long, long uh, career in athletics. Uh, at Punahou High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Big surprise, we're going to take another break, but we'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. <laughs> we also want to thank Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to help their teams play better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform 
They have online tools. They have smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. We had a Huddle Focus in our gym and it was just fantastic. Our coaches love the, uh, the flexibility of programming it for practices, for games. Of course, the analytics were there, but Huddle has so much more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, from club and youth teams, all the way through high school and college programs. And even the pros use Huddle to help their athletes perform at the highest level. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including a lot of your student athletes. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, like our school was, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone. Our guest today is Rick Toon. He's the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Rick, um, again, you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but right now I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, one of the things we like to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So as you look at your program, uh, what are some things that when you take a step back and your objective, you can say with uh, equal parts, you know, pride and humility, boy, we really do a great job with this. Uh, do you have a couple of best practices you can share with our listeners? Yeah, I'm going to give one current best practice and one uh, aspiration of best practice that we're currently working on. Um, so a current best practice, I think, is our safety protocols. Uh, so over the last five years, my assistant principal in charge of athletics, James Kekos, has really, really done a fantastic job of aligning our safety practices um, with best practices around the country. We've had um, experts from the military come in, right, and just a, a wealth of knowledge with consultants come in. And, and I think kids at Punahou really feel safe um, and they really feel supported. Uh, which is not easy to do given the fact that we have uh, over 140 teams that we run uh, in, in uh, 28 different sports. So for example, my, my volleyball program, I have three intermediate teams, grades seven and eight, two junior varsity teams, grades nine and 10, and two varsity teams. So I have seven teams within just my boys volleyball program. So the scope is, is large. So to have any kind of uh, comprehensive program that, that really instills uh, confidence in the safety protocols is, is a challenge. It's, you know, just with the scale of Punahou. Um, so again, like I, I think if anybody is uh, wanting to know more about that, it's on our webpage, all of our safety protocols and plans. Um, they're very transparent for the community to see. Um, we've developed a community hotline where you can call anonymously uh, with any concerns about anything, um, and that will be acted on. There's a procedure and process to do that. There, there are very clear reporting channels, um, and there are really um, nothing is siloed anymore, right? Nothing, nobody, no one person can make a decision on really important and complex uh, issues. So. Um, that all took a ton of work and a ton of time. And I think we're really, really proud of that. Yeah, I, I really like that idea um, uh, about the hotline. And I'm glad you mentioned, uh, um, you know, somebody checking out the website. If somebody wanted to reach out to you and uh, pick your brain a little bit about, you know, volleyball or athletics or anything, uh, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Yeah, so my email address is P as in Peter, T-U-N-E at punahou, P-U-N-A-H-O-U dot E-D-U. And I'd be happy to help anybody out. Um, I think giving back at this point in my career is, in anybody's career, giving back is something that's incredibly important. And if I can help anybody in the next generation, I completely will. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, my good uh, friend, Lance Loy, uh, you know, big time uh, uh, athletic director uh, recently posted that uh, knowledge without sharing is just selfishness. And uh, right. hopefully we're sharing a little bit of knowledge today. And listeners, we'll give that email out uh, again at the end of the podcast. So once again, we're visiting with Rick Toon, the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Big surprise, we're gonna take another break for our sponsors, but we will be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast.
we want to thank our newest sponsor, Snap Raise. Better fundraising makes better programs. Get away from the fundraising headaches from the past and go to snapraise.com and see what they can do for you. Choosing the best fundraiser for your school and your teams is critical. And the Snap Raise digital fundraising difference can really work for you. It's easy and effective. It's safe and secure. You can track participation and progress. Our coaches have used SnapRaise before, and it is fantastic. Go to snapraise.com and check out the testimonials and see the thousands of dollars that they have helped schools and athletic departments raise. That's snapraise.com. Change your fundraising game plan and go to snapraise.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Rick, earlier on, you mentioned the social, emotional, ethical learning platform. Um, I know that you've got uh, some plans uh, for that uh, at your school. Uh, can you give us uh, a little bit of uh, information about uh, what it is and where you're going to go with it? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm, I'm real passionate about this one, and we're very, very excited about a potential path. Um, path forward in this area but you know I guess I, I want to draw a parallel first and um, you know like with with my volleyball program I think of it like a physics curriculum right like you know at our school we have AP physics physics honors uh, regular physics kind of a remedial physics right and and so in our in in my volleyball program our, our varsity one team is the best of the best and th those are for kids who want to eat live breathe sleep volleyball right? That, that I call it AP volleyball. I, I don't, I don't, right. And, and then our varsity division two program are for kids who like the sport, but really don't want to commit to getting in the weight room or have to, you know, practice long hours over spring break, but they like the sport. Right. And, and so there needs to be a place for those kinds of kids as well. Right. And then our, our developmental program, um, you know, through intermediate and JV has different tracks in there as well. And so I, I think the point I'm trying to make is, in my mind, athletics is not different than, than any um, long time standing uh, subject discipline, right? It's, we're not any different than English, language, math, social studies. And so my push, and I think our push in the, in the near future is going to be to have athletics not be co-curricular or extracurricular, it's just curricular. Everything's curricular, right? So you can take a volleyball class, right? And, and, and that counts for credit, just like you know any of the other subject disciplines would. Now, there is also a great opportunity within that, not just to, to teach um, the technical skills, but as I alluded to earlier, um, having a standardized SEEL curriculum that can parallel in, in its teaching along with the, the skills that you're teaching your specific sport um, is, is something that we aspire to have, right? And, and, you know, eventually what we'd love to do is we'd love to have courses within the athletics department, like not, uh, not skill specific courses like volleyball or basketball, but leadership courses, resiliency training, uh, sports psychology, right? You can add, you can have the athletic department operate like an educational department, right? Which I think is the next, the next iteration of where athletic programs can go, right? And um, I know that there are some structural challenges in a lot of schools. There are structural challenges with making that happen at our school, just with space and time and credits and all that stuff. But I think the, you know, at, at our school, 67% of all great kids, grades seven through 12, play at least one sport during the year. It, it, that is the largest elective, right. <laughs> if you were to translate that into any kind of educational terms, the largest elective by probably four times. <laughs> we have over 2,000 kids that take that participate in a sport over the course of the year. No other department even comes close. Nobody even hits a thousand. So the, 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 the potential impact that we can have in a positive way with kids who 
as all athletic directors know, want to be there. I mean, very few and far between are the kids who are pressured to be there or feel an obligation to be there, right? Most kids who sign up for a sport want to participate. We have the extra motivation of, you know, especially if you're a team, if you're in a team sport, they're all pushing for the same goal. So they have this collective motivation that we can tap into as well. I mean, the potential for change in that area and development and growth in that area, I think is exponential, right? And athletics can really, without sounding too cliche, I believe athletics can really change the world and address some of the the challenges that teens nowadays are really facing with technology and social media and individualism and right all of that like I, I see athletics as a as not a magic bullet but part of the solution no you're absolutely right um and again those participation numbers are great it's gonna sound like i'm bragging you know i was at smaller schools uh for most of my time in florida but they were college prep schools uh, and our kids were going to graduate and they were going to go to some of the best colleges in the country. Uh, and our participation rates were in the mid to high seventies. Um, yeah. And you're absolutely right. No other program outside of the academics has more kids in it than the athletic programs. And um, I love your uh, uh, choice of curricular there. Um, I would always say when, when a teacher would say, Oh, athletics is extracurricular. I said, Oh, excuse me. It's co-curricular. Uh, you know, side by side, but uh, I love your taking it to the next step of curricular. Very cool. Um, you know, you mentioned you're just getting started on your NIAAA journey, but what you're doing right now, that's going to make a great CMAA project in a year or two. So uh, I'm excited to follow that. Okay. For our listeners, uh, our guest is Rick Toon. He's the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu. We're going to take another break, but we'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments and go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, once again, our guest is Rick Toon. He's the athletic director at Punahou High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Rick, um, we're very um, glad that you had time to visit with us today, but uh, I know, you know, we wanted to give you a chance to also talk about your involvement with an organization of which I'm actually a member, uh, Nomad. So tell our listeners a little bit about what Nomad is and some of the things that are going on right now that you're excited about. Yeah, Nomad is a wonderful organization um, founded by some amazing people, Anthony Thomas, Francis Parker, uh, athletic director, uh, Tony Fisher, Minneapolis schools, uh, uh, supervisor and superintendent. I forget the actual title, but he's big time. <laughs> uh, Kevin Adams, um, who is a longtime uh, huge athletic director in Virginia uh, and so on and so forth. I could go down the list, but um, just, just some of the icons you know, nationally in, in um, not only uh, DEIB, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging issues, but just in athletics in general. So, um, and I don't take any credit for, uh, for bringing this group together. It, it's all them. And I'm just very happy to be a part of it um, and, and willing to contribute however and uh, whenever I can. Um, so I'm currently on the board of directors uh, representing Hawaii. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the things that Nomad has done already in its short time together, um, we've produced numerous uh, webinars. Uh, I think we, the first year, they produced something like seven or eight webinars with just amazing, amazing speakers. Um, you know, and it's all designed to really um, talk about the really difficult and sensitive issues you know, that, that are plaguing our country right now, 
you know, when, when George Floyd happened, right. Nomad didn't sit back and, and, and just say, you know, um, we're not going to do anything about this. We actually brought it to the forefront. We had a webinar. We talked about those difficult issues. We have book studies that anybody can join to, to really, you know, dissect how we got here. Like how, how did we get here and why are we still here? Right. Um, and, and, you know, we're not going to get any movement um, to having a better environment for our kids unless we directly address some of the, the systematic and systemic issues that are in our country, plaguing our country right now. Um, so, you know, it's all about creating a better world uh, for the next generation. And, and, and I, I, I can't be more invested in this cause. Um, it, it, it is, it has been the cause that, that everybody should have been standing behind for the last hundred plus years, but it is the cause we absolutely need to get behind right now. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing. And again, you know, timeliness, we're um, entering our third year of doing the podcast. And when we started, it was, I think, about a, a week or two after the, the events of George Floyd. And, you know, one of our questions has been since day one, and we still use it quite a bit, is how can athletic directors do a better job of being socially aware for their constituents? And you're absolutely right. So, uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm glad that, uh, you know, Tony and the leadership, you know, allowed me and anybody to be a, a member of Nomad. Uh, it's definitely the conversations we need to be having. Rick, this has been so cool getting to know you. And it's funny how we've got those connections, uh, you know, that I that I talked about. But we're not done yet. Um, in just a minute, uh, we're going to put you on the spot again and uh, ask you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job. Uh, the athletic director's toolbox segment, which is sponsored by Athletic Survey. So we're going to take a final break, we're going to hear from Athletic Surveys. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Rick Toon is going to put in his Athletic Director's Toolbox. We want to thank Athletic Surveys for sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. We use surveys for years at my schools in Florida, and they were so very valuable. 95% of the time, they came back overwhelmingly positive. Parents and kids, they love the coaches, they love the programs. But on occasion, you know, they might uh, identify and even maybe illuminate uh, a challenge that we needed to address. And you won't know that if you don't do the survey. Um, get in touch with the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack by going to athleticsurveys.com. You can also email them at info at athleticsurveys.com um, to get started. If you've never used a survey, you're really missing out on some important information. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back. This has been a really cool episode. Our guest has been Rick Toon from Honolulu, Hawaii, also on the board of directors for Nomad. Uh, Rick, this is kind of cool. You just recently named an athletic director. You've got a background in athletics, but uh, right now we're going to ask you to send out a brand new AD on the very first job, and I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. What three things are going to go in your athletic director toolbox? Uh, so first one that I would say is essential for any educator and an athletic director is an educator, um, is a big heart. Um, you gotta be able to care about, you have to keep your eyes on the prize and, and know who your constituents are and care about them. And those are kids, right? And so you have to care about kids and you have to approach, you know, everything and every interaction with everybody because an athletic director I can't, I can't think of a job that, at least in a school that I've been in, um, that where relationships are, are, are more important than an athletic director. And so, um, you know, having a big heart for people, um, caring about people is essential, I think, you know, in that role. Uh, the second tool that I'd say would be a pair of big ears. Um, right? Because you got to, there's so many, so much knowledge and so many 
different experiences and perspectives in the field of athletics that you got to be a good listener, right? You got to go in and you got to listen and then you got to take that and you have to learn, right? You have to seek out knowledge. You have to seek out um, areas where you can get better. You have to, um, you know, you have to look for opportunities to connect with people that, uh, that can, that can fill in gaps in your knowledge and make you better. And then the last tool um, is uh, just a sharp mind. Uh, and, and, and the reason I say that is don't be afraid to ask questions, right? When, when you're listening, if something comes up and it doesn't make sense, right? I might pester my association quite a bit, but, um, you know, with, with questions, but, uh, but I'm trying to understand and learn and grow. Uh, and, and questions, questions sometimes are, I mean, all, all the time are good, but sometimes they can have the effect of, you know, bringing light to something that has just been a process that people have been doing for years and years and years and years, you know, but when you ask the question, you know, why do we do that? And what factors led us to, to start that practice? And are those factors still something that are, are present for us right now? Um, those are good. Those are all good things to continually revisit and, and, and get better and, and see if the, the systems that we've set up are still supporting kids in the best possible way, right? So never be afraid to question. Um, always do it in a loving, respectful way, but never be shy of asking questions. Yeah, uh, great, great tools. I love the big heart one. Uh, in just as little time I've spent visiting with you, I know that you've got those tools in your toolbox. Uh, we did this earlier, but one more time. If one of our listeners wanted to reach out and pick your brain, and listeners, I, I think you've got a great resource here. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yep, just through email. P tune, P as in Peter, T U N E, at punaho, P U N A H O U dot E D U. And if you forget the email, you can just go on the Punaho website, and my email should be up there under athletics. So, uh, go ahead and hit me up. I'm, I'd love to be a resource for anybody, uh, and I'd love to learn from all of you. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for having me on this podcast, and and uh, I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, no, we thank you for being on. You've been a great guest. All the best moving forward, and uh, all the best with Nomad. And don't forget, you know, we're going to connect at, uh, at Nashville. That sounds great. Looking forward to it. For our listeners. Remember, the Zoom recordings of these interviews get uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. And before we go, we want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive Indoor Scoring Tables and Video Boards. Our school was one of the first in Florida to have a Sideline Interactive Indoor Score Table and it was just fantastic. Uh, it is fantastic. Uh, we use it for home games. We used it for pep rallies. We even used it for signing ceremonies. It's tremendously vers virtual. And uh, the customer service was just fantastic. Um, the indoor scoring tables and video boards not only help you raise money for your program, but they also create a great game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or send them an email at sales at sidelineinteractive.com. See exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Once again, we want to thank you for uh, listening to today's episode. Uh, come back, as we've said, just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.